of God. They're always made them aware of the presence of God. And that's why, that's why they always stay in tune and align with God. I want to tell you three things now, this morning, that you need to do if you want to keep the alignment, if you want to keep that in touch with God. Because listen, listen, listen. Things are happening so that we, and we can stay in touch with God. So when things happen, I'm in touch, I'm in touch. We're talking, he's leading me, he's guiding me, so I'm not worried, I'm not bothered. I was reading on the internet yesterday that uh, that uh, that they asked a question. Fifteen hundred people. They said, uh, "What is the thing that there's fifteen hundred folk who are sixty-five years or older? That me, that's me. There's fifteen hundred folk who are 50, sixty-five years old. What is the thing that you regret most in life? What is the thing that you wish you had done differently in life? What is the thing that you felt that you needed to have done better in life? You're sixty-five now, and and, and you've been around for a while. So if you're looking back, what do you regret?" Most. And they didn't say, I, I, I should have I made my bad choice of a job, or, or I should have gotten education, or, or I should have saved my money. They just said, I should have gotten married. You know what they said? Listen, the thing that they regretted most, if they look back 65 years, was that they were. That they shouldn't have worried about anything. Because nothing happened to keep them from getting to be 65. And nothing they worried about was nearly as bad as they thought it was going to be. And of 1,500 folk, the thing that they said they regretted most was they spent time and wasted time worrying. Amen. Amen. Because God has a plan for us that keeps us from wondering and worrying and wishing. In our text this morning, in 2 Kings 5, we find a man who has something to worry about. He has something to be bothered about. He has something to be distressed and discouraged about, like many of us do this morning. His pain may be different than yours, but the result was the same. He was bothered. If there was something that he couldn't do anything about. You, you know. They ain't gonna bother you so bad if you do something about it. But well, look, you can't do anything about your mother's health. No matter how much you love her, no matter how much you protect and provide for her, no matter how much you stay there and watch her and, and, and make sure she gets medication and food, that you, you just can't do anything about your mother's health. But you have nothing to worry about. I couldn't do anything about my mother's health. I, I couldn't stop dementia. I couldn't stop Alzheimer's. I couldn't stop her from having this Asia. Uh, but I didn't worry about it. And I can't stop me from the decline of a wage. Can't turn my hair back white. I, I can color, but I can't turn it back black. I can't even color because it's missing. I color my hair, not my hair. It's amazing how much better I look with no hair than I did when I had it. I, I look at the mirror, boy, you look pretty good. Even though know you got no hair. That ball's about it becomes you. You should have been ball a long time ago. It's amazing. I stopped at the shell this morning. They said, Oh, you look good. I said, I never back you down. It's amazing. I like, do you look good. It's interesting. Of course, you can't see very good either, but that's all right. What you got to worry about? So now I'm telling this morning. And I'm going to get to what I said now. What else? I'm going to give you the, the three things that 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 that, that Naaman didn't have that kept him from experiencing the healing that he needed from God. Three things that he didn't have. And it's the same three things that if you don't have will keep you from experiencing the healing that you need in your life and in your family and in your finances and in your situation. Men didn't have three things. I want to tell you the bottom line up front because some of y'all some of y'all go to this map. Because I know Alabama games up late. I was up late watching last night. So I know I know how some of y'all feel this morning. Bro Brandon. It's alright. They got 10 left more to go. And you ain't got nothing with every year. I'm just, you know, glad I'm lost first. 
Oh, no, I was to That class is, I don't know, I ain't going in. <laughs> I'm just out here having a good time. But my name is have three things. And if you don't have these three simple things, you miss experiencing the healing the name of God. Anybody need a healing? You, you need your finances healed. You need your marriage healed. You need your emotions healed. You, you need your family situation healed. You need your children. If you need a healing, you'll learn from the name of experience. The name of needed a healing. He didn't have one and the rags of God. He was the way of God. He was the way. He was successful. He had power. He had attainment. He had favor. He had honor. He had promotion. But he had no awareness of God. If you were getting promoted and you don't know God, you are not. You want to experience the blessing of God. I've been promoted a long time, but if I don't have awareness of God, my promotion don't mean anything. He didn't have in the words of God. Number two, he did not acknowledge God. He never acknowledged that God was God and that God was supreme and that God was Savior and that God was his Lord and Master. He never acknowledged God in how he lived. He never acknowledged God in the things he did. He never acknowledged God in the choices he made. I wish Brother Captain here today because Brother Captain said, that one of his favorite verses is Proverbs 3, 5. In all the ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct the path. Lean not to the own understanding, but in all the ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct the path. Name will never acknowledge God. There was never any expression of the written in this text, the name and even the said anything about God. The never, 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 name and never spending time worshiping God. Name and never spending time in prayer and talking to God. He never acknowledged that God was Lord and Master of the universe. He had no awareness of God. He never acknowledged God. And then the third thing, go ahead, sit down, let's just leave in our regular, leave in our deacon, let's go. Let's give him God. Mike, don't you stand full of walk to the back and then come back to you? <laughs> See, if, if, if many had the council practice the other day, y'all could come in and got the training. Now, old folk, raise your finger. Raise your finger, old folk. You know, it's been easy to leave church. When you raise your finger, everybody knows you're going. Now, man. 
Haman, the host, the, the, the captain, the host of king of Assyria, was a great man with his master. Arun, well, by him the Lord had delivered him, had given deliverance unto Syria. He was a mighty man in valor, but it was what? And, and all that last three words almost wiped out every other thing that he said. He had position, he had power, he had honor, he was well received, he was well known, he was well respected, but he had a condition that put him in a bad fix. He was a leper. <coughs> and, and those of you who came last Sunday know that leprosy was a horrible disease. It was a disease that put you in a horrible position, in a horrible condition. It was a disease that caused you to be isolated from everybody, to be mocked by everybody, to be talked about by everybody. And some of us got things in our lives that's causing folks to talk about us and mock us and upset us and distress us. Naaman was a leper. But God can handle leprosy and he can handle the challenges in your life. Paul Martin, in spite of, in spite of the uh, wealth that he had, Laban still had a condition that only God could fix. Right. So in spite of what job you got, in spite of how much education you get, young folk, there's something that only God can fix. You don't come to the point of life. Your mama and daddy can't fix certain things. You get married, but Pat and your mama can't fix a marriage. She can't tell a girl the truth, you're right. She can't tell a girl be proud of you. Only God can fix something. It's, I, I, I was having a great time watching my son and his wife because they, to some degree, remind me of, of me and my wife when we were young. And I know that some things I can't fix because there are some things nobody can fix for me and my wife. God had to fix it. And uh, it's fun watching them, watching their personalities, watching their attitude, watching him act a lot like me, and watching her act a lot like her mother in law. <laughs> we were going down to. George Washington Plantation in Washington, and, and I asked her a question, and he answered it, and she got a little snappy with him. And then she asked him, said, then, he, then I asked him, she asked him another question, and he would say, she said, you're not speaking to me, Jonathan? <laughs> <laughs> and my wife looked like, just like your daddy. <laughs> you're not speaking to me, Jonathan? <laughs> you know I'm speaking, you know I'm speaking, you know I'm speaking. I know y'all don't have that problem. I know you don't have that problem. I know you don't have that problem. Um, this is all I mean to life. <laughs> but you know, but you know I, I, I thank God so much for all the because God fixed my marriage. I can fix it. I didn't have a right attitude. I didn't have a right temperament. I didn't have any right. I didn't torture right. But God, there's some things only God can fix. God can fix it. Whatever it is that's, that's causing you uh, problems, whatever it's causing you challenges, God can fix it. Just so you remember that, that, that AJ would go to the school that God wants him to go to, and that God, he would have the experience at the school that God wants him to God can fix it. God can fix it. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to be over concerned about it. You ain't got to read all the press reports. Go, go to all the read them. Read them. God, God, God knows all those things. He, he knows because it's hard. And his mind, you just know what the coach said. God can fix it. He was a leper. And in spite of all his achievements, lepers were still a spot that was keeping him from experience of blessing that God wanted him to experience. The second thing I love about Naaman was that Naaman really was an Israelite. He was a Syrian. He wasn't among God's chosen people. But God can, can fix it for anybody. So if you got folk who don't know God, you got folk who are not Christian, you got folk who are not living right, God can still fix it. The text says Naaman was the captain of the host of king of Assyria. Mm -hmm. Syria was Israel's enemy then, and the Israel's enemies now. The Israel and Syria are still fighting each other. They're still at war with each other. They're still lobbing rockets into each other's neighborhoods. They're still killing each other. But God took a Syrian by the name of Naaman. God can bless anybody. So no matter how bad you are, and no matter how far from God you are, God can still bless you. I'm glad that when 
I was way off from God. God could reach out. Even though he was sitting high, he could still help look low. He knew my rise and my downset. He knew my thoughts before. He knows all my thoughts and he can still fix me. He knew I was wrong when I was right, he can still fix me. He knew I was up and when I was down, but he can still fix me. He knew when I was doing the right thing, the wrong thing, he can still fix me. And God can still fix the thing that's wrong in your life. And God can fix the folks that are wrong in your life. And God can fix the circumstances that are not going on no way in your life. Isn't God, aren't you glad that God can fix it? I make up every morning knowing that whatever I encounter, God can fix it. Whatever I come short, God can fix it. But whatever I need, God can fix it. But whatever happens in life, whatever child I face in life, whatever thing I've been dealing with in life, whatever person I encounter in life, God can fix it. God can fix things. You ever go to school tomorrow believing me that no matter how messed up and tore up my school is, God can fix it. No matter how stupid my principal is, God can fix it. No matter how petty my supervisor is, God can fix it. God can fix it. But Naaman was not aware that God can fix it. Naaman had never acknowledged God and admitted that God was God. God had fixed it for him. He gave him wealth and honor. But he had to fix the problem that he had in his life. Just because God has given you a job doesn't mean he's fixed all the problems that you are encountering in life. Just because he's given you a good home doesn't mean he's fixed all the needs that you have in life. God can fix it. Name more leper. The leper was a disease that caused you to be isolated from society. Leper was a disease that when folks saw you walking down the street, you had to yell out unclean because you were a leper. You had to have your mouth and face covered because you were a leper. You saw last week what happened to the lepers. They were distant to the right. They were dependent. They were desperate. And they were, but they had a desire to the right to see folk blessed. No matter how bad your situation is, you all still have a desire to see folk blessed. Folk blessed. I told Sister Hunter in the text a couple weeks ago. The reason I'm still here is because I still think God wants me to be a blessing and to bless. Right. And whenever God says, well done, <clears throat> then that's when I will hand it off to somebody else. But right now I still feel that he has me here to be a blessing and to bless. That's my mission in life. That's my goal and my aim in life. All the things that I involve myself in, all the things that I engage in, in the ministries, the meetings, and all the stuff I do, is because my desire is that you be blessed. And my desire is that I be, I'm not really worried about me. God satisfied me a long time ago that he'd take care of me. I'm not even worried about mine, Sister Dorothy told me a long time ago he'd take care of mine. He just wants me to take care of his. Kind of good to know that some things you ain't got to worry about. Uh, kind of good to know that you ain't got to worry about what you're going to wear, what you're going to drink, or where you're going to live. God said, I'll fix all that, boy. I want you to work on the things that I called you to do, and I'll fix all the stuff that you need fixing in your life. Kind of good to know that even if I don't know where the money's coming from, it's coming because God had promised to fix it. Even if I don't know where things, how things will unfold. It's good to know that God told me he's going to fix it. So Naaman was not aware of God. Naaman had never acknowledged God and acknowledged who God was and never acknowledged God as his Lord and Savior. And Naaman had, not, uh, had never uh, aligned his life with God. He was experiencing the blessing of God. And he was experiencing the goodness of God. And he was experiencing the grace of God. But he didn't know it was the Lord for whom his help comes from. And so he was not aware of God. There are some folks here this morning who have things, and they're not aware that those things came from God. There are folks here this morning who are doing things, not aware that God allowed them to live, to move, and have their being. I know that I got up in the morning, it was God who woke me. And I know when I put one foot on the floor, it's God who touched me. And I know when I took another foot on the floor, it's God who touched me. God is aware of me, and I'm aware of God. God has acknowledged me, and I'm acknowledging him. And I'm trying to lie my life to God. So God, what can you mean for me? You know, 
the water so through me. All the pipe got to be via mine. When the mustard pot pipe get out of line, the water began to begin to leak. So Naaman was not aware. But Naaman, in his conquest, had captured a little girl from Israel and brought the little girl home to be a servant to his wife. Now, I'm glad this little girl, Mother, Mother, Mother Harden, didn't get mad to because she was a servant. Folk don't like right. servant. Folk will be on the deacon board, but they don't want to serve. Folk be on the trustee board, but they don't want to serve. Folk want to be a deacon less, but they don't want to serve. If, 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 you're not, if you're not willing to serve, then you have missed the point of why God has you here. All right. All right. If you're in St. Andrew this morning, for the time you're here, you're here for one reason, that is to serve. Mm -hmm. That's to serve. Not, 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 not to be served. Not to watch other folks serve. If you're not involved in some ministry of service, then you'll miss the point of why God had you. He didn't bring you to the coffee and told you some of y'all come 20 miles away. I, I told Kim, Kim, I said, listen, I, I love y'all being San Andrew, but I passed like 10 churches away to your house. I'm not suggesting anything. But it's a long way up here where y'all just sit. It, it's a long way up here where y'all have to read a minute. So, so if you've come that far to serve, then why don't you? Sir. So, so this girl was a servant. She did not complain about her assignment. She did not complain about the fact that she was captivated from a family. She did not complain about how she was treated in service. What folk spoke to her? What folk acknowledged her? What folk loved her to serve where she wanted to serve? Let her serve how she wanted to serve? Let her serve as long as she wanted to serve? Let her serve the way she just served. And like those lepers, she had concerns the other folk's lives better. Naaman was a captain. Naaman was a master. And her concern was for Naaman. Are you concerned about your supervisor? Look, we're just mad here. Uh, are you concerned about your principal soul salvation? Or are you just mad with it? Uh, are you concerned about your husband's soul salvation? Or are you just mad with it? This woman, this little girl, the text in verse 2, and so the series had come out by company and had brought away captain out of the land of Israel, a little maid. She wasn't just a maid, she was a little maid. It's one thing that she was a maid. God said she was a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. She became Naaman's wife's servant. Don't even know her name. Her, her name ain't no way of a few. You don't care what the fact is in the middle seven corner. Her name ain't no nothing. But it's been in the book of life. Her, her name ain't no views. Her name ain't on the church cornerstone. Her name ain't on that. But it's written in the book of life. You know, at least God could have put my name there so people know we did it. <laughs> <laughs> They don't never get to your history right. They don't never get to your I went to this one church, every church in that version. My daddy gave me church this land. They didn't put it in there. <laughs> so I thought my wife would say, well, daddy, put the tag to me. You bought the land. Let the little church over. <laughs> they bought it. I didn't have to read it when they bought it. <laughs> with my money. I got to give my one real dime to it. I have better to spend my money on building folk, not building buildings. That's the mission. Now, we, we may build something, and I hope we do, but I promise you, who won't be leading the building plan and the building program? It won't be me. I mean, I'm more concerned with building folk than building buildings. I, I don't know, bought three houses. You know, I forgot how to get rid of the I don't want to borrow it. This girl's name was not mentioned. She wasn't concerned about her condition. She wasn't concerned about how she was treated. She wasn't concerned about how she was mistreated. She was concerned about her master, and she wanted him to be well. Did anybody want to be well? Did anybody want to be healed? Did anybody want to be healed? Raise your hands, all right. Go ahead, be God can use you if you have a concern and a desire to see folk be better and do better. I love the truth. I want them to be better. I want them to be better. I want them to be happier. I want them to experience better things than I experience and that you experience. That's why I feel my time. That's why I feel my time. That's why I feel my own them. That's why I care about them. That's why I'm talking to them. That's why I'm with them. 
because I want them to have better things. I want them to experience. I'm going to go to them too. Listen, I've been too much of a There were so many of them who wanted me to have better, to be better, to be better. They had so much. They had so little, but they did so much. They gave so much. The better day saving social club, I'll never forget that they gave me $50 for the college. Yellow Rose saving the social club, they gave me $50 for the college. I'll never forget that. Mr. Perlow, Mr. Ruby, Mr. Tom, Mr. Moe, 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 Mr. Moe,
talking to me. I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Muslim. Why are you talking to me? I'm Islamic. Why are you talking to me? I'm going to have to bring it home because y'all believe in the Bible. The same folk will fight it now, the same will fight it then. The same hate they had because of racial and cultural and religious division they had then, they still have now. It ain't nothing new. They just changed name. Iran, Iran was just Persia. Persia, that's Iran today. They just changed the name. Iraq is Babylon. They just changed the name. The Tigris River was in Babylon. The Tigris River, your famous river, is in Iraq. I told you I had the misfortune of, of a soldier on a piece of weapon because I told them not to feel getting drowned in the Tigris River in Iraq because I told them that the, you can't put this system in the field and everybody outvoted me. And on the worldwide conference, I was the only one. They didn't know they ever happened to me. They called me home on the morning grass and I don't do no more. And I dragged in, didn't change clothes, sweaty, down the conference, and told everybody, you can't deploy this system because it's missing an ECU and a PPU, and the soldiers will try to do things to make it work, and they will end it themselves, and they ignored me. They deployed that system. I got a report. So this guy who told me, in the Euphrates River, Tipped over like a polar wood because a lot of battles in the center of gravity was too low. And he climbed upside down in the face of And before he get out, he drowned. So, what I'm trying to get to see is that this stuff that happened then, the same stuff is happening now, the same place. But this woman did not let her cultural differences, she did not let her religious differences. She did not let her social differences keep her from being concerned about folk. Even folk who had more than she had. She had the fact that she was a servant with a little money, a little resource to say, I can't do nothing. You always have folk about God. You always have folk about God in your life. You always have folk change God and God in your life. But my brother was such a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful testament. Example because when he came to Christ, he came seriously. All the folks who ran around with him and drank with him and hung out with him said, if God can change you, he can change anybody. And he had a powerful impact. Because the folk he used to hang out with and lay around with, they got up and came and joined the church and he passed so that God can change you, and I know you've been changed. He had a much more powerful influence than I had, the folk thought I was good. I was good, I was sneaky. He got caught. I did. He got arrested two times doing stuff. I did the same stuff, just didn't get caught. It's about the grace of God. That boy was stupid. He didn't get caught. I did the same thing he did the same night. One night, he got arrested. I got home in bed. But it was a powerful testimony to the folk who had been with him. They saw the change that God wrote in his life. And that was a stunt. He had three wives and five or six or seven, eight or nine, ten. It's choking. I don't know. But they wouldn't mind. I'm keeping up. But you know, they all come to love him. They love being around him. They love being with him. They should things for all of them to get together. All the, you know. y'all, I should have left y'all. <laughs> They loved him. They loved him. They saw the change that God had brought back. She said, Go down there and see this problem. I'm going to get to the end. I'm going to skip. Y'all can read it. It's five, one through four. Tell me to skip to the end. So he went down to see the problem. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen in between. But, but, but Naaman had to do one thing before God could bless him. I told you he had to be aware. I told you he had to acknowledge. And I told you he had to align his life. But to get to that point, he had to go where God was. See, 
See, Naaman couldn't stay in his house. He couldn't stay in his old ways. And get God to change his life. Someone's trying to stay the way we are. I'm going to change our life. With the same attitude. With the same lack of interest in worship. The same lack of interest in studying God's word. The same lack of interest in praying. And we want God to change us. Don't work that way. If a man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Behold, all things become new. Naaman couldn't stay where he was. He couldn't keep doing what he was doing. He had to go to where the prophet was. To become aware of God. To come to acknowledge God. And to align his life with God. You can't stay where you are. You can't go back to what you were doing. You can't go back to living the way you were living. And expect God. Listen, I, I tried that. I didn't want church at nine years old. But for a long time, I was trying to stay the way I was. I was still trying to do the things I was doing. And it wasn't working. It wasn't working. Only when I really became aware of the God and acknowledged that my need for God and then committed to aligning my life with God, then let me tell you very quickly, it's not aligned perfectly. But my goal is to align myself with His way. I'm a long way from being perfect. I still get mad, I still get bothered. My wife picked me up 20, 15 minutes late that for just I'm like being late. Now I always imagine she did it one time. She been late more times she been on time. I'm just saying, I'm saying, I'm talking to life. But and then we got home today. Are you back with me? <laughs> no, baby, I'm happy. That was 20 minutes late, late just stand there with God's side room, you get there. I'm happy, happy, happy. <laughs> She don't stay mad long, I don't stay mad long. We're gonna go to dinner and she'll rip tap a few minutes, we'll take a lunch. <laughs> I've got some I've got myself a Hawaiian post candy from Seattle, so <laughs> by going in, baby. Milk of God would let me write the sermon now because he knew I wouldn't say it if I wrote it down. <laughs> I was struck all week when I write it down. I talk two or three times right now. I said, ah, you just say what you write. I would just say they. Last night, well, please, and write something down. I don't want to give it this bit to take over. No. <laughs> just want you to tell them. So, so then going down to me, I want to tell you about those stuff. I really wish I had time to tell you those stuff, but I don't have time. Couldn't bother that. Talk about some time. So then he came down in the second King chapter 5. And, and he went to, listen, I love this, I love this. So, so Naaman, verse 9. So Naaman came with his horses, with his chariots, and stood at the door of Elisha. Verse 10. And Elisha sent a message to him, saying, Go wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Ooh! Talk about frost in your lips. He can't come outside and talk to me. <laughs> he texts me and he calls me. You miss a blessing! You miss a blessing! What do you like attitude? Get away of God working! Stop trying to tell God how to work! Let me thank God that He does work! You mean I am named the captain of the serious post, an honorable man, a man of valor, who have horses and chariots, and you can't come outside and see the way <laughs> Thank you. 
I already told her, listen, you got first, I'm going to change everything. She knows I'm going to change everything. I'm going to put a bed up here. I'm going to put a bed down. I'm going to put a bed down. I'm going to put a big TV, TV in the uh, bedroom. I'm going to change the study to the living room because the living room is going to be a dining room. I already told her I'm going to do it. That's why I'm going to get married. Now, I made, after I get all sex embarrassed, I'm going to fix my time. 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 But I'm not gonna get mad. I'm not gonna get bothered. I'm not gonna break peace in my house because of stuff. Listen, listen. My own mama law told her daughter one day, she said, baby, I like your house, but you don't need to bring more stuff in here. <laughs> I didn't write this down, baby. I'm not gonna break peace with you because you don't see what I see. You don't agree with what I want to do, how I want to do it. I'm still going to love you. I'm still going to try to work with you. I learned not to get mad, not to get bothered. It ain't easy. But one of the ways I do it is, I don't want to know if you're mad with me because then I might get mad with you. I don't want to know what you said about me because it never hurt me. So if I don't hear it, I can't get bothered about it. And I've learned since the daughter not to let them, folk tell me what folks say about me. I cut folk off when they try to tell me about me. I don't worry about what they say about me. Because I might be bothered by it. I might be hurt by it. I would really think that they care about me, that they bother them because they bother me. One of my best friends, I cut off with that. I said, I told them to call me to what folks say. She said, well, I got to tell you that make you feel better. But I said, I said well, you call that me, call that you. <laughs> I don't need folks to watch out for me, I got God. And you don't want the right folks around me to watch out for me. You think I had 24 complaints filed against me in government and never lost a one without a guard on my side? I tell you, the second one, I didn't even pay. I didn't even write nothing down. I just walked in there and talked. You, you know what the investigator told me on my second complaint? He said, only reason you and this is the investigator from Atlanta who I had to pay to come over here, who I had to pay a TDY, I had to pay a salary. To so investigate the point against me, and he said, the only reason you're in here is because you're trying to do the right thing. That's what the investigator said. Have I been to St. Louis? Police came, Bobby came. There were no pillars we shouldn't have. Let's, let's hug each other one left. The St. Louis police. They stayed with me there to the tow truck company. In fact, they wouldn't call the St. Louis tow truck. They said, Here, they'll charge you too much. The St. Louis tow truck showed the police sent them back. So let me call one of my friends. They got to get your car. So you don't have to pay no tow fee to St. Louis, no empowerment fee and release fee. I call one of my bootleg friends. <laughs> they got to get your car. And the police don't take it to the impound lot. They won't even take it to the garage. And then you take another tow truck, you have to run and get to the to get fixed. So, but I call my friend who will come get you and take you to any garage you want to go. That would say the police did. And when I got ready to go, there was two or three white, two or three black, and the firemen, we all held in place. God can fix it. God can fix it. So he got mad, he got mad, he got mad, he got mad. And then the little girl, that's why I love these children. The little girl said to him, um, Well, if he didn't ask you to go do something big, if I asked you to be a deacon, <laughs> if I asked you to be a trustee, if I asked you to be chairman of the Cruise Education, you would have done that. He said, but he just asked you something little and you mad. In verse 12, Naaman said, Are not Abana and Papa rivers of Damascus better than all the rivers of Israel? Why are you going to make me do that dirty thing, boy? The Jordan River is a very dirty river, still is, by the way. He said, Why can't I go to one of the rivers of Damascus that are beautiful and clean? No kidding, place tigers in your place. Well, I got to, Lord, why have I got to go to St. Andrew? Where unclean folk are, where gossip folk are, where black body folk are, where complaining folk are, where nitpicking folk are. Why have been the male chorus where people are? Why have you been saying St. Andrew Park where people are? Why have you been saying this women thing where people are? Why can't I go to one of the rivers in the 
like when this usher go. Why I don't like it. Can I do something different? Can I do something better? Verse 13, his service came in the nearest place. My father, if the prophet had been to do some great thing, would not have done it? How much of then would it be be quashed and be You know, the lowest hard thing to do right here, broken up, it's about working as a nurse. That's the lowest hard thing it is. That's a little hard thing. I'll decorate. I'll bring a plate. Sometimes it's a little thing. Listen, I'll prompt you this. If you don't ever learn to obey God in little things, you'll never, he'll never use you in big, big things. Because if he can't trust you in little things, if he can't do a little thing like getting to church on time, how is he going to give you something big to do? Jesus said, he that is faithful in the least is faithful in that which is much. He that is unfaithful in the least is also faithful in that which is much. He God that should do those little things. Sometimes we, we misunderstand that if I can be faithful in the little things, a plane don't have to miss one way but by a little bit because of crash. He said, if he'd ask you to go do something big, you're not done. And that's, and that's the guy would be a rapper. He said, listen. If you can go to some big, you know, the easy to do some little. I promise you this. If you don't be faithful to God in little things, he'll never trust you and will never get you allow you to experience the big things. If you're not faithful in the little blessings, you'll never experience the big blessings. And the die that faithfully said in Matthew 25, 23, he'll have three people. I'll give you some big things to be ruled over. You see why those things are important? Yeah. Proverbs said, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little over the hand, and leave the clock. So, verse 14, we finish. Then he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan River. According to the man of God, his flesh came like place of a little child, and he was clean. Verse 15, and he returned to the man of God, and I'll come and sit and said, now, well, look what he said, verse 15, behold, now I know what? I am I'm aware of God. Now I know there is a God. No, that, I know there is no other God in all the earth, but is me. I'm aware of God, he says. I've acknowledged God. Now, therefore, I pray to take a blessing of the servant. Now, I'm going to align myself. See what happened? Pretty simple things happen in life. I am now aware of God. I am now admit there is a God. And now, I'm going to align my life according to you. If you're here today, if you will go, if you will come, whatever the it you need down your life, God will do it. If you need to be saved, God will do it. If you need to be corrected, God will do it. If you need to be encouraged, God will do it. If you need to be empowered, equipped, enlightened, God will do it. Are you aware of God? The earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, the world, all the to other end. He found it on the sea, he established on the world. Are you willing this morning to acknowledge that Christ is Lord? To acknowledge you need him as your Savior. To acknowledge that you need to come to him. To acknowledge that you need to live with him. Are you willing to align your life with the ways of God, the things of God? You're not going to get where you need to be if you're not lined up with the way God wants you to be. 
I try to live a misaligned life. My life wouldn't line up with what God wanted of me. My life wouldn't line up with what God wanted me to do. And I was miserable. I was restless. I was weak. I was weary. I was born. I'm not perfect by any stretch of imagination. But I'm trying to stay in alignment. You know why I come to Sunday school? I've been coming to Sunday school for almost 60 years. Do I keep coming? I'm trying to stay alive. I've been coming to Bible class almost 60 years. I'm just trying to stay alive. I've been coming to worship for 60 years. I've been coming to worship while you know I believe in worship. I'm trying to stay alive. Eric's often. Sister Nina, take my car to the garage. Give me a new tire. A little more. Check my mind. You know what? Check my mind. Check my mind. Well, Michael, every now and then, put the phone there. Stand. Check me. Spark clothes, fire in the table. Yep, sir. You know what we're about spark plugs. Yeah, don't you? They got electronic emissions now, don't they? I don't know about electronic emissions. How can you change my world? They would stand together. If you're here today, 